Ladies and gentlemen, this is your reaction, and this is the controversial missing children's milk carton program. That's wordy. Yeah, so I saw the first half of this, I guess, as part one. I don't know, but yeah, so far, <laughs> first of all, he said something about 121 or something. What the only one that are kidnapped, and I just assumed he was talking about thousands so or 121,000. I'm like, hmm, for this population. It might not be too much, but it is uh, somewhat like big enough number. Then somebody told me in the comments, it's not thousands, it's literally just something like 121 or something like that. And I'm like, okay, that is fucking low. From what was predicted, that is very low. But yeah, it makes sense. Like uh, most of the kidnappings usually is like, uh, you know, false uh, things, right? You know, usually parents involved, right? If they get divorced, one just takes away, you know, this is my kids, I'm going to take them to a uh, fair or something. And just somebody just reports it, something like that. But yeah, obviously, uh, this program to me it feels like, you know, first thing in the morning you see this, like hysteria. It's just ridiculous, right? I didn't thought of that. But yeah, when, when he talked about it, it just makes sense. Like you wake up, you go to, you know, I guess your, you know, dinner table or whatever. You pour in your milk, try to drink, you know, coffee, kids drink milk or whatever. Oh, how, how, you know, good morning, this and that. Yeah, this day's going to be good. And what the fuck, their kids are missing. I don't know, it's just depressing somewhat. And if it works, it's fine right but you know the, clearly it, we can never know if it worked or not but you know the effect doesn't feel that gigantic and the hysteria beware timmy right you don't just don't go anywhere don't go out of your school don't even play in the garden you don't know what will happen right look at this kid this kid just gone <laughs> just yeah the kid, kid's mentality like holy shit just constantly scared so let's always on Remember, if you like Merickson, don't forget to subscribe. So I know which type of videos to react to more. Uh, you know, I love doing this kind of, uh, you know, uh, this type of videos. I know what to call it, investigation, mystery, whatever. I love them, you know, because of it. Right, Van Degen is kind of similar, talking about different conspiracies or different things like this that happen. It's always, uh, you know, interesting to see. So let's do it. Also didn't help was the juxtaposition between the milk carton program and the nature of missing children. See, there were several cases of people thinking that the milk carton program was a good idea. And pretty much across the board in the beginning, everyone thought it was a good idea. Mm. Uh, until, you know, children started to get scared of anyone taller than them, but that's different. Um, but <laughs> there was this period of time where people really liked the idea. And every time that they would see a new child's face, they'd sit down with the family and be like, okay, this kid is Bobby Lawton. And he looks like this. He's about your height. So if any of us see Bobby, make sure to tell a police officer. And it was a good. It was doing what the program was supposed to. It was getting families thinking about yeah. this missing child. And especially with some of the language I've seen around it, politicians had this weird Timmy stuck in the well mentality. Like, oh, these kids just got away from home. Let's go get them. So people kind of got blindsided by you know the nature of missing children because i probably don't have to tell you but even in the modern age with tech and search equipment being as great as it is if a child is kidnapped yeah. or even gone out of their house oh this fucking thing is dark right i mean yeah this is the dark reality oh my god I think, you know, obviously, I don't know exactly, but where I live, I think there's, a, you know, you can't report, you can't report uh, somebody missing until 24 hours, right? I'm pretty sure that's the case here, you know, I'm not 100% sure of that, but I'm pretty sure that, uh, is that the case everywhere? Because if that's the case, this chart is already fucked up, right? Because all this is just lowering probability, and cops won't even look for t until 24 hours, and then it's like 3% or so chance, like, <laughs> what the fuck? House for more than 48 hours the chances of finding them alive are not great as a matter of fact the majority of child murders happen shortly after the initial abduction and the time it takes for an investigation where the police are called they do a search they file the child as missing and then a local dairy hears about it gets a picture of the child and then puts it out to be printed on their milk cartons and then distributed in stores not a good time frame. So while mm. near the end of the program, like I mentioned, a lot of the faces on milk cartons weren't really missing children. They were just children who were filed as missing for one reason or the other. Even in the beginning, when it was like these high profile missing children cases, 
by the time that face got to the dinner table, the chances of that kid being found weren't good. So it created this atmosphere where families would all invest themselves into this child and then either through the news or talking to the police, it would be like, oh, well, what happened to old Timmy? And the police would be like, oh, his, um, his remains were found in the forest outside of town. He'd been there for weeks, it seems. Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> what, what, what about little Sally? Well, it seems that Sally was kidnapped by a human trafficking ring, and uh, <sighs> there's really no lead on the killer. She's probably out of the country at this point. Oh, and then that guy has to go home. <laughs> this, is, this is a time for, you know, not so much information, remember? You know, those hat and just like people like, oh, honey, I'm going to work. Everything's jolly, everything bright. It's one of those like four out four, you know, uh, you know, intro type of things, those clips. <laughs> people were in their own bubble and suddenly, oh, what about Timmy? Did, did you find it stuck him in a well or something? No, 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 no. It's just, yeah, the news is dark, grim. It's, oh, is that what it is? What about her? No, just, no, they just, somebody took her. Let's not talk about it anymore in detail. Like, god damn. Darkness of the world is revealed too much in today's world. People didn't used to, th I mean, most of the people didn't used to think that in the past. Because, you know, uh, unless you're involved somehow, right? Like, unless something has happened to you or one of your family member or something like that, you're not gonna know what kind of world there is. You just live in your bubble. You go to your work, so kids go to school, play and whatever. <laughs> Damn. Go home and tell his family that. And then another kid shows up on a milk carton and that cycle continues until everyone's tired of seeing it. So once again, public favor began to fall. And while I've talked about a lot of the problems with the Missing Children Milk Carton program, it wasn't without its success stories either, mm. including one of the most bizarre, crazy child abduction cases ever, which was that of Bonnie Lohman. When Bonnie was three years old, she was kidnapped from her father by her mother. Bonnie's mother and stepfather spent the next couple years living in Saipan and Hawaii with Bonnie, hoping that they would eventually lose heat from the police as they had just kidnapped a child. Eventually, they moved to Colorado around the time that Bonnie is seven years old. At this point, because again, Bonnie was a kidnapped child, she hadn't been enrolled in school or allowed to talk to really anyone outside of her mother and stepfather. But in Colorado, Bonnie began to make friends with the neighbors next door, and her father even took her out to town on rare occasion. On one of these occasions, they were walking through a grocery store, and Bonnie looked in the dairy aisle to see her own face on a milk carton. Damn. Now, since Bonnie was never placed in school, she wasn't able to read and didn't know that just above her face was the word missing. Bonnie was a child and just saw her face on a milk carton and thought it was weird. And in one account I heard from Bonnie, apparently her stepfather introduced the picture to her. Okay, can we take a second and think like, okay, you're not going to enroll your kid into a school because of whatever your shit, right? Okay, why not teach her yourself how to read? Oh, we're not going to put her in school, it's too much dangerous, and we're not going to do anything about it, fuck it. Like, do you even care about your kid at this point? I mean, come on. In, at least you could homeschool somewhat. Like, they were walking through the grocery store, and he's like, Oh, w would you look at this? Here's your face. Like, talk about overconfidence. So, the stepfather bought the milk carton, because Bonnie thought it was neat, and after they finished the milk, he let her cut out her own picture on the side of the milk carton and keep it. So Bonnie would just play with the picture of herself on the milk carton because she thought it was neat. And one day she had left it in a box full of Barbie toys that she had taken over to her friend's house. And after leaving that box at her friend's house, her friend's parents opened it, saw the picture of Bonnie with the word missing above it, called the police, the police came and arrest Bonnie's mother and stepfather and returned Bonnie back to her dad. And that is, at least to my knowledge, the one time that a child's face on the side of a milk carton 100% directly led to the rescue of the child. Yep. And again, there were other cases of people saying that a child was saved because someone had recognized the picture from a milk carton, but Bonnie's the time that the milk carton did the heavy lifting. Yep. Can you imagine the bizarre nature of that, of seeing your own picture on a milk carton 
and then getting older and realizing what that meant like what a what a bizarre moment in history Seriously. but again cases like this were few and far between and most people continue to build criticism for the campaign as a whole. Another large criticism of the campaign was that the children featured on the side of milk cartons were overwhelmingly white, and normally whenever a minority child was shown on the side of a milk carton, it was a local program rather than a national program. So as you could imagine, people didn't take too kindly to that. And it seems- That happens a lot. <laughs> I remember Louis C.K., I think it was Louis C.K.'s uh, comedy bit. <laughs> He's like, uh, one girl somehow, you know, I guess got lost in a sea or something, and there were search parties for days. An entire team or something, but they were minority, you know, racial minorities, basically. I don't know, I don't know which group was that. Was that, you know, African Americans, Mexican? I don't remember. But they went missing. They searched for them uh, like a, just 24 hours or something. So he just made a, uh, just, just made the joke like that. Oh, can you see them? Oh, they're gone. <laughs> and that was just a few years ago. As the program went on, like I mentioned, it went from high-profile missing persons cases to just a series of cases where children were reported missing, with a lot of them just being spousal disagreements or runaways. And like with those later cases, the police, the judge, and everyone knows that the parents got into a fight, and one of them took the kid for a bit, and they're gonna go to court, and everyone knows where the kid's at, so that person doesn't need random do-gooders stopping them on the street because they saw the kid's face on a milk carton. And a lot of people seem kind of stumped by why the quality of, that's a weird way to say it, the quality, why the requirements for missing children kind of dissolved over time. But I think there's a pretty easy explanation. Yeah. Adam Garfinkel, a historian, notes that over the years, the government began to offer tax breaks to dairies who would feature kids' faces on the side of them because it was seen as a public service. Which means in the later years of this program, the more kids you show on a milk carton, the more you can get taken off your taxes. So I think I know why they quit caring. <laughs> it also didn't help that a lot of the poster child cases for the milk carton program did not have happy endings. For example, Eden Pat's, the first one who was shown nationally, was never found. And several of the details around the case are very grisly. Uh, initially, there. Let's be honest, let's put it in simplest terms. Ignorance is what people wanted at this point because the results weren't there in. So basic mentality is, if this is not helping that much and we don't want to know about all these people that get missing and what happens to them, so basically stop this milk carton. That's the basic gist of it, right? Because in the end, you could argue, like, doesn't matter if we get result or not. Even if we can't save one person, what's the harm, right? It's better to post, you know, put it on the milk carton, right? No, but the result was, we are all getting depressed. It's hysteria. Don't post it. I guess that's the gist of it. I mean, you can't kind of see that, right? I mean, <laughs> you, it would create this kind of anxiety environment, right? If you just constantly see, you know, it's not just in your home, right? If you go like supermarket, there are milk cartons missing, 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 missing. And like he said, it was on different places, like, you know, postcards and I don't know what, different places they were just missing, you know, stickers there. So it can o overwhelm, basically. There was a suspect who was arrested and questioned, who was a serial child abuser, uh, but then they can never get anything on him. And then in 2017, someone else confessed to killing Eaton and went to jail, but then the validity of the confession has been called into question. Eugene Martin was never found, and there was never a lead in the case other than the person he talked to that morning in 1984. And Johnny Gorsh's case is particularly bizarre. In 1999, again, there had been no lead in Johnny Gorsh's case. He was the one who his dad found the wagon with the papers in it uh, that morning in 1982. And from 1982 to 1999, there were no substantial leads in the case. Until in 1999, Johnny's mother said just in a conference one day that in 1997, two grown men showed up at her house and one of them claimed to be Johnny. She said that Johnny had a very specific birthmark on his chest, so she checked his chest, and sure enough, it was Johnny. So Johnny comes into her house, and they talk for an hour, where Johnny explains that he was kidnapped by a ring of human traffickers, and here, about 20 years later, had just now gotten out, and likely would never see his mom again, 
as he is still in hiding from the traffickers. The police investigated her claims, could never find any leads. Someone came out saying that they knew Johnny because they were also kidnapped by that same ring of traffickers, but then that guy turned out to be lying. And a lot of people think that... I don't get that. Why not just take Johnny and just go to cops directly? FBI or whatever. Was FBI? Yep. Basically any organization. I guess FBI was the one who would handle this, right? Kidnapping, anything like that. So why not just go to them, right? Like, okay, I, I was just escaped human trafficking. They are after me, protect me or whatever, right? I, I don't understand that part. I mean, were they that incompetent back then that they have been, you know, people like, we can't go to the cops, it's not gonna work or something like that. Johnny's mom just had a bit of a mental break and made the story up. And then mm. in 2006, Johnny's mom came forward again, this time with a photograph that was left on her doorstep that depicted three men tied up and gagged and one of them according to her was johnny now grown up however a police officer in florida said that he knew the picture because a similar thing happened in the 1970s when the picture came across his desk as being a group of kidnapped people so the police officer looked into the case and was able to track down all the men in the photograph and found out that it was just a willing photograph that the three men took and it seems mm. that in 2006 someone played a very sick prank on johnny's mom by reusing the photograph making her think that it was her own son what so that goes fuck? to say a lot of these cases even the high profile ones that the media would use as a benchmark left people oh my god what if she's not making things up uh, about the, even the appearance right I mean, it could be his, you know, her son. I mean, she did say that she also saw the mark, so I don't know, man. But what if that's a sick joke from the start, like somebody's just doing that? Because obviously, because of the milk carton thing, it would be somewhat famous, the case. But what if somebody just decided to make a joke out of all of that? That's just fucked up, man. But where did the birthmark come from? So I don't know, it could be that he actually did came, come back. But I don't understand why go to hiding. Um, what is this, James Bond movie? You can just hide? Isn't it best to just go to cops? I don't know. So, you know, it could be either that he did come back or she's probably making it up because of the trauma, right? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, but it's just, you know, the 2006 or whatever he said, like uh, how the photo thing, that they, somebody's just making fun of her, that's just fucked up. Why would you do that, man? Feeling more disturbed than encouraged. So between the debatable overall impact, the false attribution of missing children, the terror it caused both adults and children, the non-reporting of minority missing persons cases, mm. and allegations that stem from tax breaks given to dairies, you can probably see why the program quit. The final mm. nail in the coffin for the Missing Children Milk Carton program came in 1996 with the invention of Amber Alert. The Amber Alert yeah. program, which is something I've talked about and you're probably familiar with, allows the authorities to give real-time updates on the children, descriptions of the children, and descriptions of their captors and the vehicle they're using. Amber Alert allows people to have real-time updates, especially in that first crucial period of time after the child goes missing, in a way that the milk carton program never could. And similar modern advancements in technology have allowed much better chances for children that go missing. For example, in 1990... I mean, yeah, I mean, in today as well, like, milk carton makes no fucking sense. We have internet. We have digital media, right? There's so much things that is much faster than physical milk thing. So it definitely makes sense. Why isn't it a thing? And Amber Alert, I mean, it makes sense. Like, by this point, media was getting much bigger overall, right? Uh, people were getting more connected to, you know, t anything TV related at this point, right? I mean, inter internet was, uh, you know, com anything computer was kind of still early stages, like, you know, but still uh, TVs, uh, radios and many broadcast things were pretty common by this point. So it kind of makes sense like how Amber Alert would basically work better than the milk carton program. 62% of missing children were found alive and well, whereas in 2011, 97% of children were successfully recovered. Mm. And Amber Alert seems to have a significant part in that factor, as in a 2022 survey, 1,114 successful recoveries have occurred because of Amber Alert. And while I've talked about a lot of the controversies surrounding the milk carton program today, 
I truly believe that in the beginning and throughout all of it, there was at least a remnant of good faith people looking to help kids. In the beginning, it was entirely done out of the kindness of people's hearts. And the fact that 700 dairy plants around the United States took a cut of their profit, because remember, the kid occupies a space that an ad normally would, the fact that they did that, and by some estimates printed a total of over 5 billion milk cartons with missing children's faces, says a lot. And yes, numbers were bloated to incite public panic, and once tax breaks became involved, it became a whole business decision, but at least in the beginning, it was just people looking to help kids. While the milk carton program would slowly fade out in the years following the invention of Amber Alert in 1996, mm. many believe Molly Bish in 2000 to be the last child ever featured on a milk carton. And sadly, as with many children featured on milk cartons, her body would be found three years later. I think the milk carton program is fascinating because, again, it comes from a time whenever people began to overcorrect for the, frankly, negligence that children received. Up until things like the Missing Children Milk Carton Program and the National Child Safety Council, there was no way to distinguish a missing adult from a missing child. And nowadays it seems ridiculous because the rules are completely changed, rules for searching and information are completely changed, but at the time it was just treated the same across the board. And things like the Missing Children Milk Carton Program began to bring the concept of missing children into the public conscious to a degree that it eventually changes across the board. And had it not been for that program, things like Amber Alert, and modern mm. rules dictating how searches can be done and how quickly searches can be done for missing children never would have happened. So even if the program devolved to a point... Where yeah, I don't know about that. Look, uh, the ch children and people getting kidnapped, right, was a thing, was going to stay a thing. Even if the milk carton thing didn't become, uh, didn't become so big, eventually when the media became way too big somebody would have thought like we could use this and amber alert would have been a thing uh, anyhow right uh, somebody would have just figured out like maybe we can create uh, some kind of a technique that we can use different type of medias or something just to keep updated people would have come up with that right even without the milk carton program so even today in the modern world with this much information that is so free of course there's going to be something like amber alert right but how late it would have been a thing that's the question where it kind of lost track of what it originally was. And there was a lot of controversy that it scared kids and led the public wrong. I still think it was an overall good because when I mm. look at figures like 1,114 children saved because of Amber Alert, that number never would have happened if it wasn't for the faces of Eugene Martin and Johnny Gorsh showing up on a Des Moines milk carton in 1984 that set all of it in motion. And I also think it's interesting to learn about because there was an entire generation. Yeah, I mean, look, we can never really know how much, how many children got saved because of this program. There is some one or two instances, like you said, that clear cut says that they were saved because of this program. But in the end, this whole thing of recovering kids is what was already, uh, you know, success ratio was already kind of low. So if this program helped even a few kids, it's a success in my view i guess i get it that it's it can be a bit depressing right it can show the reality of the world to the people who want to stay ignorant whatever but still it saved some people and uh, i think amber alert would have been a thing anyway but i think it would have been much later than it was so amber alert got founded pretty you know earlier because of this so overall this had a good effect and this was so big that this is like a trope or not trope this is like a a thing, right? You see in movies, TVs are constantly, right? Even Family Guy and South Park make jokes about this. Like, so, you know, just saying that somebody got missing, people show this milk carton because this became that famous. Like, this become a symbol. Like, where is the, you know, talk about missing kids or anything, show the milk carton. That, that's how big this was becoming at the time. ...of people who their childhood before school was growing up and looking at the face of a child they probably never knew but now would be ingrained in their mind forever mm. as the missing kid who ate breakfast with them every day. It's such a bizarre and weird moment in history to think about. And again, one that I think was necessary, but almost has this macabre nature whenever we look back on it. And I think it's fascinating. And if you stuck around this long in the video, 
Hopefully you think it's fascinating too. And see, I told you it would be depressing. And even if it was depressing, I'm still glad you're here and stuck around this long. And it means the most to me. And I just want to say thank you for watching. Thank you all so much for sticking around. This is a weird topic, I know, but I guess that's kind of like the, you know, tagline for the channel at this point, just weird stuff. Um, I was watching a YouTube video where someone was talking about old cartoons and how they used to make jokes out of people on milk cartons. And I was like, I bet there's some weird history to that. And sure enough, I start researching and find all these, uh, like, yeah. the tax break stuff and people complaining that... Um, it was scaring kids and all of that. And uh, I, I was like, aha, I was right. There is weird stuff. So I had to immediately tell you all. <laughs> so hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, mm. It's something I don't think it's talked about a lot. There's a few other YouTube videos I watched on the topic that were pretty good. Uh, but I wanted to bring it to you guys. And hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, but yeah. I, th I All right. So there we go. <sighs> this was a good topic, I guess, for him to cover. Because uh, nobody talks about it. This has become just a thing, like I said, you know, like, you know, cartoons and anybody just makes jokes about it because it be something has to be too famous for people to make jokes like that, right? And so, yeah, I, I, this is the first video I come across who actually talks about this topic, like how it started, why it went away, what effect of, of it was. And yeah, uh, like you said, Amber Alert became a thing when it did, probably because of this simple cartoon thing. Uh, you know, it probably saved a few lives. We can never really quantify. I mean, we can't directly track like, you know, uh, the milk carton program had effect. Otherwise, this kid would have never been found. We can't really know that. That's the point with awareness. You can never know if awareness helped anything, right? But you just have to hope that you know, probably did, right? I mean, even if it helped like one or two people, it was still a success. And, you know, like he said, there are instances where clearly without this program, a kid would never have been found. So yeah, this program is somewhat success. Alright, well, if you like my reaction, do forget to subscribe, and yeah, I'll see you next time.